Thank you, Madam President. Um, you know, I've said this many times uh, in this circle and certainly in committee uh, that I'm a small business owner. I <clears throat> opened my business in 1994. I'll uh, tell you my age. I was 27, <clears throat> so you could figure out figure that out through the math. Uh, but um, basically, I wanted to have an opportunity to earn a living uh, for myself at the time, you know, prior to getting married, having kids, the whole works. But just taking a chance, taking a risk, and trying to open up uh, my own business. And the first thing I did, obviously, was look for a location, uh, had uh, interviews with certain employees, uh, and then I started to promote my business. And knock on wood, I've been fairly successful for 17 years doing what I do. I'm not a bad guy. And I think a lot of the attitude in this chamber is that business people are bad guys. We think that all business people are MCI and Enron and Bernie Madoff, and we're all robbing everybody blind. But it's not true. The backbone of this economy in the state of Connecticut is people like me, people who are just small business owners willing to take a chance put their life on the line because they have to go out and get a loan to, to try to start a business and try to open a business and want to earn a living for our family. And at the same time, what we do is give back to the community. I can't tell you, Madam President, every day about how many uh, requests I get from this little league or this uh, boys club or, or the local ARC or the local church group or the high school and, and what have you. And I do it all because I think it's the right thing to do. And I also think that because it will pay dividends for your business as well. And it does. And that's what you have to understand, is that people in business are good people. They want to make a living for their family and for their, for their employees, provide their community an effort into people to have jobs. This kind of legislation doesn't do that. It inhibits that. As Senator McKinney said about the gentleman who had just less than 50 employees, there's no incentive to get to 50 employees. Why? If you're going to get taxed more, we just saw the greatest tax proposal in our state's history, $1.6 billion, with a B, billion dollars in new taxes in the state of Connecticut. We're going to probably take up a bill very soon about captive audience and 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 limit the discussion that employers can have with employees. We already saw in the Hartford Current yesterday that Overstock.com is pulling their ads from Connecticut because of the internet sales tax. And in addition to that is 1-800-PET-MEDS and a whole host of other businesses. You have to be in business, I guess, to understand. You really should take a chance. One day, when you're out of the legislature, and you say, you know what, I'm going to open a little cafe, I'm going to open a little bookstore, I'm going to open a little uh, convenience store, whatever. I want you to do that because you will see how difficult it is to be in business and how the burdensome regulations that we have in the state of Connecticut are driving businesses down. I have a, In my district, I have a Lake Quasipog Amusement Park. You may have heard of it. Uh, it's a great little park. In fact, they just put in a new roller coaster. Uh, it's been around, I think, close to 100 years. Family-owned business. It's generation to generation. They have uh, a great number of employees, in fact, over 50 employees. And a lot of them are part-timers, uh, college kids, high school kids. They work the summer. Um, you know, they get uh, time after school or they have the summers off and, and, they, and they certainly work in, in all the different amusements or at the rides. Uh, they have a, a beach and a lake there, so they work there as well. This is going to affect them. We also have a, a guy by the name of Joey Chiazzo who owns Frankie's Hot Dogs, and I'm sure you've all heard of Frankie's Hot Dogs, especially uh, when Governor Rowland was here. Uh, but Frankie's is the hot dog king. They truly are. And he's got the same situation. He's got a great number of employees that are teenagers, that are college kids, that, you know, to some earlier points, they're single moms. They're, you know, these are, these are also people who, who are, you know, entry-level positions. And you're hurting them. 
This bill hurts them. A good friend of mine uh, is Carmen Vacalabre. Carmen, Madam President, owns the Carmen Anthony Restaurant Group. Carmen was born in the Brooklyn section of Waterbury. And I don't know how many of you know that section, but, you know, it's a tough neighborhood. In fact, I lived there uh, growing up myself. And he raised himself out of the Brooklyn section of Waterbury and went to Hamburger University. And, and I don't know how many of you know that, but the McDonald's Corporation has a wonderful program to implement managers and rise people through the ranks. And he rose through the ranks. And he opened a, a little restaurant called Mima's, and he, then he opened a number of Arby's. And now he has the Carmen Anthony Restaurant Group, which I'm sure a lot of us attend and go to because they do a great job. There's one in Woodbury in my district. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Then this weekend, I was up in Boston, and um, we stopped uh, for lunch at this local place, and it was at the south end of Boston, and this area is, is coming back to life. It was it really uh, had a lot of troubles for many, a great number of years, and we met a guy by the name of Sean Simmons. And Sean Simmons is a local guy who grew up in, in Southie, grew up in the south end of Boston, who decided to open a restaurant. Because that's what he knew. He, you know, been working in that type of field. So we sat and talked to him. And, and this particular restaurant that he had in the South End was doing okay, but he's only been there a year, and he was trying to get it going, trying to get his uh, feet under him. But he said, you know what? As, if you're walking around the city, take a walk up Boylston Street. And if any of you go to Boston, Boylston Street is really nice. He says, you go to my place. It's called the Parish Cafe in Boylston, but you can't get in because it's so busy. They do such a great job. So. I had started, he, he ended up coming to the, to that establishment as well, and we were chit chatting, and, and, you know, of course you get into, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm in the legislature in Connecticut, and, and uh, I started talking to him about this bill, and I said, you know what, Sean? That's coming to you next. If it passes in Connecticut, it's coming to Massachusetts. And quite honestly, he was probably shocked because Massachusetts tend to be far more left of what we do here in Connecticut. I think they used to call it Taxachusetts, if I remember correctly. But Sean was a good guy, a nice, nice man, you know, and he does a lot for his community. And I bring these things up because what we're doing here is hurting these people. We're hurting these businesses. If you don't think so, you're wrong. Because what's going to happen is extra taxes, extra burdens, Extra fees. I have a, a, a fee in, in my uh, location. We have a TV radio repair license that we do every year for the state of Connecticut. And it went from $100 to $200 in one year. $200. I have a small little store, and I pay $200 a year for my fee and TV radio repair license. Also, lest we forget the business entity tax that all businesses pay. $250, just for the sake of sticking your key in the door, turning it, opening your business, you pay $250 with no benefit at all. Now, that was supposed to sunset many years ago, but it's still here. We are talking about burden after burden after burden. And when Senator McKinney says that businesses are going to close, let me tell you, he's right. Businesses will close because of this legislation. At best, they will reduce their workforce, or not expand their workforce to get to this 50 plateau. I remember in the Appropriations Committee, Senator Prague talked about San Francisco, the city of San Francisco. Well, a study was done in San Francisco that said 30% of employees in the bottom fifth of earners reported layoffs or reduced hours. So let me just say that again. 30% of the bottom earners, the bottom fifth of earners, reported layoffs or reduced hours in San Francisco because of this legislation. So when you stand up and you think you're saving or helping this individual who's on the low end of the pay scale, you're not. You're not. You are actually hurting the very people that you think you're going to help. Because... 
businesses can't afford this. If they can't afford it, unlike the government, they can't go out and raise more taxes, raise more revenue. You have a budget, you have certain revenues based on your sales, and you have to meet those revenues. If you don't, you reduce costs. They can't just go and add a new tax. They can't just increase their prices. They're going to lose that way. So what happens is you're going to reduce your costs. And the biggest cost for any business is payroll. Greater than the rent, greater than anything else, it's payroll. You will reduce your payroll if that's the case. Reduce it down from 680 hours or from 50 employees. It makes sense. Why wouldn't you? What we should be doing is giving these businesses incentive to grow. Why not give them an opportunity to give them incentives? to expand their payrolls, expand their business, because when you do that, you create more jobs, and then you have more taxpayers rather than taxes. It's simple economics. It's very simple. This right here, the stack, is literally all the people that came to testify against this bill. Look how thick this stack is. These are all the people who came to testify against this bill businesses that stood up and said, this is bad legislation. So we're going to go against all these people and what they have to say. They're certainly in all of our districts, I'll tell you that. They're not just located in the 32nd. They're in all 36. But no, we're going to add a new tax. We're going to add a new burden. We're going to add a new mandate. We're just going to pile on and pile on and pile on and kick these businesses when they're down. The worst economic activity we've seen since the Great Depression yet we're going to just pile on more. Does that make sense? Are you helping the people that you think you want to help? You're not. You're certainly not. Madam President, as we move on, I will certainly have a great number of questions for the proponent of the bill. I don't want to interrupt her right now. Uh, but... Thank you, sir. <laughs> But I got to tell you, this is a bad bill, and it hurts good people. Thank you.